Hi, I'm about to do my Sunday dinner. Um, as the weather changes and the weather starts to get warmer, I like to have uh, dinners that are a little bit lighter. Um, I'm going to be doing some blackened fish, which I can just, you know, sear in the pan. I can just pan sear. Uh, some roasted broccoli that I'm going to do in my air fryer. And um, probably some cheesy uh, mashed potatoes, which uh, food snobs are not going to like because of the type of mashed potatoes that I'm going to be using. But hey, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a really kind of, you know, easy dinner, um, not a lot of fuss. Usually for Sunday dinners, I'll have something like pot roast or uh, meatloaf or, you know, something like that, pork chops or whatever. But like I said, when it gets to be spring and summer, I eat a little lighter. I love stuff like fish. Um, I do uh, tilapia, salmon, trout, mahi-mahi, um, cod, kind of. Um, I like a lot of grilled fish. I like a lot of pan seared fish. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, it's going to be pretty simple and pretty easy. And I'll just roast some vegetables, asparagus or broccoli or something like that. Um, when it gets to be cold, I'm back to my crock pots, my chicken and rice, uh, my meatloaf, my pot roast, all of that. So, <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, I just wanted to say, um, any new subscribers, thank you. Um, any new comments, thank you. If you're, uh, just watching, even if you're not subscribing, I appreciate it. Um, you know, I don't have to be a big, huge channel. I just, I'm just starting out. I'm new, but, um, I appreciate, I mean, even just one little, you know, like comment subscriber. I mean, I remember when I first started three weeks ago and I had like, two subscribers and I was so excited and happy <laughs> you would have just been like laughing at me I mean I'm a very simple homespun person and um you know like connecting with people very real very down to earth and um you know as long as you get me uh, and I have, you know, a group of people, even if it's a small group of people that get me, that's cool with me. Um, but I just want to say, you know, especially just starting out, um, I appreciate, you know, any like, share, subscribers. Um, like I said, it's totally cool. I love it. Um, and I love to cook and hopefully that kind of shines through and you can see that as I'm in my little kitchen in my little apartment cooking. Um, so with that being said, I hope everybody's safe. Hope, I hope everyone's feeling okay, doing okay. Um, stay safe out here. Continue to stay safe. And uh, I'm going to get into my uh, latest cooking vlog. Uh, I'm uploading vlogs every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Um, please don't forget I have other food vlogs that are up uh, for desserts, for appetizers, for main courses, uh, for uh, keto friendly, diabetic uh, friendly. I'm steadily adding uh, vlogs every single week. So, um, you know, like I say in my description, I, I'm, you know, you're not going to like everything, but there's something, even if there's just one thing, um, that you're going to like. So, um, there's something here for everybody. So anyway, uh, let me get into this, uh, blackened, uh, fish Sunday, easy Sunday dinner coming right up. <laughs> All right, this would be the basis of my quick, easy Sunday dinner. Um, but really, I say Sunday dinner, but any dinner. But um, I especially say Sunday dinner because that's when I usually will make uh, like a dinner dinner on Sundays. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, you know, during the week, I'm doing really quick stuff. Like uh, I'm doing little foil packets with vegetables and meat and them, protein in them. Uh, I'm doing, um, you know, maybe some um, homemade healthy or sloppy joe or something like that. And I'm going to have a vlog up that for that soon. Um, probably, I probably won't do that till this fall, uh, upcoming fall. But um, the week I'm usually making a really super quick, like in a dash thing, uh, meal. But, you know, Sundays I'm making, you know, something with... Um, that takes longer than, let's say it takes longer than a half hour. <laughs> let's say that. But anyway, I'm going to chop this broccoli up. 
Uh, I have been leaving my fish out to get to room temperature and I also want it to dry off. I've been patting it dry because I'm pan searing the fish and um, you know I wanted to get a nice sear. You know tilapia gets a bad rap but I love tilapia. I don't eat it often but I don't eat fish often. I eat fish um, I eat fish often but I don't eat fish a lot because they say that you're not supposed to especially for women eat fish a whole lot because of the mercury um, but um, I love tilapia I'll have it like once every couple months I have salmon at least once or twice a month salmon once or twice a month I adore salmon um, but I love cod I love mahi mahi um, I think you know things get a bad rap but I feel like as long as you eat them in moderation it's okay um, but I also love trout trout works beautifully with pan searing um, but it just so happens that I'm out of trout. So I looked at my freezer and I was like, oh, I have some tilapia. So I'm going to use this. Um, look at that. Instant mashed potatoes. <gasps> for shame. For shame. And you know what's so bad? I got a whole bag of fresh potatoes right here. Along with my yams, my sweet potatoes. A whole bag of fresh potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't feel like fooling with those uh, today. I really don't. This is one of those Sundays where um, I ended the week tired and I'm starting the week tired. That's And that's a shame. Uh, I ended the week doing a whole bunch of stuff, running errands, uh, doing vids, uh, working, uh, you know, my 10,000 other jobs. And uh, I'm ending, I ended the week you know, tired, like, you know, TJ, TGIF, yay, but then I had all this stuff to do, um, and now I'm starting the week, not like, you know, dragged it tired, because I actually got to take a little nap today, but um, it's a shame when you end the week tired, and you start the week tired as well, and I know a lot of you know how that feels, but anyway, um, I don't feel like dealing with those uh, peeling potatoes and boiling them. Um, and you can buy fresh mashed potatoes too, although they're loaded with salt. But I tricked my instant mashed potatoes out. I'm going to use some 2% milk, a little bit of butter. Y'all know I don't use a lot of butter. If you watch any of my other vlogs, I got some sharp cheese and some singles. Um, usually I have craft singles, but I was like, I'm going to try these singles. Um, you know, what the heck. Um, but... The, I usually have the Kraft Deli slices or the American cheese, but hey, this is what I have right now. So, and I also have some cornbread squares that I'm going to add to this that are in my freezer. I do have a cornbread vlog that is up. It is up now as of a couple days ago. And it's actually a vlog for lower sodium boxed cornbread. It's not Jiffy. It's not a Jiffy recipe. This is a different type of cornbread vlog that I have up that has less salt in the batter. So please check that out if you love cornbread like I do, uh, but you are trying to reduce your sodium. And the cornbread comes out nice and moist and fluffy. You guys know I add sour cream to everything. In fact, I'm going to add some sour cream to these instant mashed potatoes. Light sour cream. I just don't have them out. So let me uh, get set with preparing uh, cut this bro broccoli, uh, wash it off, season my fish, uh, prepare my instant mashed potatoes, and then I'm going to get my cheese and stuff in them. So I'm going to be right back. And I'm so hungry. I'm ready to eat now. But there's one little formality, and that is that I have to cook, actually cook the food. <laughs> All right, be right back. I'm ready to season my fish, and... You know how people are like, <laughs> they make a, a rub to make, you know, black and fish or black and whatever, black and shrimp. Uh, I'm, guess what? My, my fish is going to be blackened and I'm seasoned with a little, uh, and I'm not making a rub. So I'm just going to put a little Mrs. Dash on there and I've got some Chipotle, um, ground chipotle be careful with this a <laughs> little bit of that on the front 
little of that very be, be I'm telling you be careful with it because it's, it can get if you use too much you'll mess up whatever you're putting it on if you use too much um, so that's enough didn't get any up there so I got that chipotle seasoning on there and um, <laughs> uh, some paprika a little lightly with the paprika and I also lightly season these little fillets with uh, a little bit of seasoned salt uh, either Laurie's or I had some Morton season so I can't even remember but um that needs a little bit oh almost went, went overboard uh, <laughs> so a little bit more of that this is so good this um, garlic and herb um, Mrs. Dash and I love the regular original Mrs. Dash I'm out I have to get some more but this garlic and herb is delicious they have one that's called everything but the salt as well but I don't like that as much as I do the regular original Mrs. Dash and this garlic and herb is like so good and they also have an onion and herb that is delicious so you know what this fish is ready like I said I didn't make a spice rub. I didn't put brown sugar, a little bit more paprika. I didn't do any brown sugar and all that. But guess what? This fish is going to be better. So this uh, mashed potato is going to go real quick. If you want to, you know, cut potatoes and boil them and all that, that's cool. I do that sometimes, but most of the time I use instant potatoes. So prepare your instant potatoes. Just however you prepare potatoes. So whatever, if you're using fresh potatoes, if you're using uh, instant potatoes, prepare them. Put as much, you know, however much butter, milk, whatever. You know, I don't use a lot of butter, and I use 2% milk. So um, let's get that ready. And I have, uh, y'all know that almost every video for anything cheesy or cakes and things like that, uh, I'm using some light sour cream. So, uh, I'm going to add about... Two tablespoons of that light sour cream and uh, a little bit of uh, ranch dressing. A little bit. I have to watch this because of the salt. But um, I'm not adding salt to the instant mashed potatoes, the plain mashed potatoes. So a little bit, little sprinkle of that because the cheese has, you know, salt in it. And... I can start adding my cheese. Whatever cheese you have, whatever cheese I have is what I use. Um, I have some sharp cheddar here. So, um, add about a handful of that cheese and the cheese slices. Um, cheese single. I'm going to add about a, a, a couple of these. Um, not going to go crazy because I cannot do, you know, a lot of cheese. I've tried reduce fat cheese and <laughs> I do not like the reduced fat cheese. So what I do is I use the full flavor cheese um, and I just use less of it. So just three slices of that in there. And then I have that sharp chatter that's in there. So what I'm going to do is. I'm just going to leave this. Where's my top? Where the hell did I put my top? Oh, here it is. So I'm just going to leave this like this uh, and leave, leave this on the stove and let my cheese melt come back to it. And I'm going to start uh, chopping up my broccoli, cleaning off my broccoli, chopping it up, getting it ready for my air fryer.
So those are those potatoes that I had let that cheese, you know, melt into them. Uh, and I was a little bit worried about, since I didn't have the craft cheese singles, but those um, uh, Amazon brand Happy Valley uh, cheese singles melted perfectly and delicious. So um, what I'm going to do is... Preheat my oven to 375. And <clears throat> guess what I have? A little mozzarella cheese. Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> so I mix that in there. Um, and just kind of fold. It's going to be thick. You want it to be thick like this because, um, but you don't want it like too, 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 too thick. So, I might need a little bit water. You can add more milk if you, you know, if you want to. I just add a little bit more water. Um to loosen them up, fold them. If you, you know, mix them and beat them and all that, they're gonna be like really tough and like gloppy and icky. So, a little garlic. And herb seasoning. Just fold that in. And a little pie pan, a square pan, any kind of pan that you have, spray it with a little uh, nonstick. And Start adding your mashed potatoes. Um, you don't want these to be like traditional mashed potatoes because they're like, you know, cheesy. So you want them to be kind of thick. But like I said, thick but creamy. So you get the last bit. The pan. What's left, I will lick that out of the pan or rather get my finger in there and imagine me just putting my whole face in that. <laughs> imagine me just putting my whole face in this and just licking it clean. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, All right, so just smooth them. As you can see, they're thick, but they're not, but they're still creamy. They're moving. <laughs> it's not just saying, you know, super stiff. So you wanna like even them out in your square pan or your pie pan or what dish or whatever you have. Um, and like I said, my oven's preheating to Oh, those are good. 375. I'm going to add a little extra cheese on top. At this time, you could either put, you know, cracked black pepper. I'm going to do some of some more of that um, garlic and herb salt free, which has plenty of, believe me, plenty of pepper in it. 
but sprinkle with cracked black pepper if you are not using salt free or if you do not like salt free and spray the top generously with um, cooking spray this is ready for my oven 375 degrees I'm gonna do um, uh, 25 to 30 minutes and uh, it should get a nice crust on top the last 10 minutes I'm gonna crank the heat up to 425 and then uh, it's gonna be nice and golden at the top creamy and tender on the inside so I'm um, just waiting for my oven to preheat 375 uh, 30 minutes the last 10 minutes cranked up to 425 thing before I put it in the oven and I almost forgot I always do a little bit of paprika on top of this lightly very lightly all the way around and that's it it's ready for my oven Okay, so I wanted to show you this fresh broccoli and how I like clean it up. A lot of people don't like want to fool with fresh broccoli and it's like, <laughs> it's really not hard, but I've already chopped most of it, but I reserved a piece just to show you guys in case you're not familiar with fresh broccoli. Um, it, you know, if you're somebody who doesn't cook or you're younger or you just don't fool with fresh broccoli and stuff or greens and things like that you wouldn't be familiar with the leaves and stuff and how you have to clean up the fresh broccoli so it's like this all you do is get you're getting that off the leaves um some of them don't even have that much leaf this is a really nice tender broccoli i mean i picked this up um at the farmer's market uh, here in maryland in baltimore and um, this is so tender and I mean I can feel how tender it is but anyway just get the any leaves that you see pick them off um, there's not a ton of them and the stem I like I actually love the stem of the broccoli um, I eat the stem but if you don't like the stem take it off um, but just chop it cut the cut that tough it's a tough end at the end of the broccoli stalk and just cut that tough end off and then you get the tender part of the uh, stem that's left and you know just cut it like that if you still have a little you know piece like this it's not going to kill anybody that you have because you have that on there um, but this these are cleaned off um, and this broccoli um, going to rinse it off again and then dry it because I'm going to be like air frying it but I want it to get like a little crispy on it a little color on it so that's how you do fresh broccoli so easy right so now when you see a head of fresh broccoli you're going to buy it if you're not buying it already right right <laughs> all right so I've rinsed this broccoli off and I patted it dry um, so you want, you don't want it to be wet because you're not steaming it in the air fryer. You want it to get a little like crisp tender, but, um, I'm out of olive oil. So I'm going to make do with a little bit of vegetable oil. So just a little, um, maybe about a teaspoon of vegetable oil or olive oil is best. Um, and I spray a little no, I stick through there, a um, little bit of seasoned salt, a little salt free, um, either the original salt free, this garlic and herb, which I love now, or um, any salt free of your choice, onion powder. Be careful. Just a little. About that much. And hold on for one second. Um, didn't have my spoon. Okay, so what didn't I put? Okay, a little bit 
of paprika. And I know you're going to think this is like really strange. A little bit of honey. A little bit of honey. Um, it helps it to, and this is how much, if it'll come out. <laughs> come on, baby. I know you can do it. About that much honey. Um, it helps with it when it starts to brown, get caramelized in the air fryer. And it adds like just a little bit of really um, good sweetness to the broccoli. So I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. You want it to sit because once you get that air fryer preheated, I'm going to preheat my air fryer um, to 325 degrees. Once you get the air fryer preheated, you want this to be nice and seasoned. And then when it gets in the air fryer, all those seasonings have like permeated and gone through and it's awesome. So if you can get the seasonings on your vegetables, whether it's broccoli, cauliflower, whatever it is, do it before you roast them or air fry, like let them sit. And they are so good. I'm telling you, they are so freaking good. All right, so I'm going to preheat my air fryer, and I'm going to get my broccoli into my air fryer once, once it is preheated. I'm just holding my camera over here, but that's that broccoli that's been, you know, sitting, marinating. And um, my air fryer is very hot. It is preheated to uh, 400 degrees, 10 minutes. Hear that sizzle? Can you hear the sizzle? So, just like that. And um, I can smell that chipotle. So, 375. And I'm gonna do about, uh, Less than 10 minutes, about seven minutes. And then flip them, check it. Crank it up to 400, let it get crispy and see how it goes there. Air fryers really vary. Your air fryer and my air fryer are not the same. Even with the same brands, they vary. So you have to adjust your cooking times with, for vegetables and meats with your particular air fryer. But I'm gonna just do 375, uh, about seven minutes, and then check on them, flip them, and uh, come right back. All right, y'all, I'm going to start cooking this fish. Um, I have a little small pat of butter down in the pan and less than a teaspoon of oil. Um, this is really hot. I'm going to do a little nonstick. And I want that pan, like... <laughs> So hot. Uh, I want it on this side first. So this is most definitely not going to take a long, long time to sear this fish. And I'm just going to put this on this side.
So I'm going to let that go. I'll try it at medium high heat for a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to flip this. And I'm not going to be flipping this fish again. It's just going to get done on that side. I'm going to put the top, squeeze some lemon juice, and I'm not going to be flipping, keep flipping, flipping, flipping it. You don't have to do that. Um, a few more minutes. See how nice and dark and blackened it's actually getting? Um, so, about one or two more minutes. Be good to go. All right, this fish has been sitting for about one or two minutes. I've got some fresh lemon juice. I could also use fresh lime juice. You can use fresh lime juice if you want. Um, but I'm going to get that lemon juice on there. Let that sit for about two minutes. All right, family, it's time for that dinner cam. Um, here's that blackened fish. Uh, tilapia, you could also, this would work perfectly with trout, cod, mahi-mahi, uh, really any kind of fish you like, salmon, whatever. Um, what really makes it is that chipotle and that paprika. It gives it that blackened appearance and that blackened taste and seasoning. And the fresh lemon juice you know, just makes it <laughs> so delicious. I can smell that chipotle, it smells so good. Look at my broccoli. All right, my spoon wants to run away with me, run away from me, but look at that broccoli. Um, it is perfectly caramelized, not too much, not too little. You can see some little crispy spots. It is perfectly crisp. Mm tender that broccoli taste is like like broccoli on steroids broccoli flavor on steroids because you roasted it and because we um marinated the broccoli for about 20 to 25 minutes and then got that air fryer super hot before we threw the broccoli in it kind of like just seared in all the flavor and that honey gave just that little teeny bit of honey um I mean, it wasn't even that much. You saw how much honey was I put in this. Gave it that gives it that little bit of sweetness that kind of balances the heat of the chipotle. So it's so good. <laughs> and of course, those nice cheese and potatoes. They're still nice and hot because I had I turned my oven off and I put them inside. The oven look at that look how cheesy they are they've got that sour cream they've got mozzarella cheese sharp cheddar cheese and american cheese you can use whatever kind of cheese you like so i mean i don't know what do you say i think it's time for dinner right <laughs> um so well deserved but um it is definitely time to eat I can't wait to get my mouth around some more of this broccoli. This piece that I just tasted tastes heavenly. Um, it's tender, but it's still crisp. It's delicious. Um, you have to try it in the air fryer that way. Roasted broccoli is, I mean, steamed broccoli is such a different air fry. I'm sorry, air fried broccoli or roasted broccoli, like in your oven, like she pan roasted, is a totally different animal than... Uh, steamed broccoli. I'm telling you, when you roast broccoli, when you grill it, roast it in the oven, uh, pan sear it, or air fry broccoli, it just takes it to a whole nother level. And this fish, what can I say? This fish is just 
that it tastes so freaking good in my mouth. And it's got that fresh lemon juice on it. And it's perfectly cooked, nice seared and black. And, and another thing, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> do you notice that most recipes, all recipes are called for something to be black and you have to make a rub? You notice I did not make a rub. I just threw the seasonings on there. So, uh, <laughs> hey, you can make it easy for yourself or you can make it a little bit harder for yourself. Not that that's hard, but when you, all you have to do is really throw certain seasonings on and you don't have to go through making a rub. Hey, you know, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely time to eat. It is on.